Lots of folks advocate that you never talk to the police. In fact, on the back of the cop lock business card, the fourth piece of advice given is talk to the police as little as possible. To each their own, you have to do what you're most comfortable with. But for me personally, I don't believe such an absolutist statement is always correct. There's a big difference if an FBI employee comes to your place of work and says, you're coming with me, versus you walking up to some police employees on your own terms. I think it's important to engage in the latter for a few reasons. First, to lessen the perceived division that exists between police employees and so-called civilians. Second, to erode any fear that may exist within your own mind. Police employees are just people after all. And third, and most important, to share ideas. After all, it's not through the ballot box or even through the cartridge box that real lasting positive change will occur, but through the soapbox. It's only when individuals choose to stop initiating force and to stop sitting idly by when others do so that the institutionalized violence inherent in the police apparatus will cease. This first conversation is with Mr. Dobbs, who works for the Grants Police Outfit. I'm active with a uh, decentralized project called coplock.org. If y'all train your colleagues on uh, people filming police, and if so, like what kind of information is communicated? Uh, we do. Uh, basically, you, anyone has the right to film us or be around us as long as they're not interfering with you. If, if someone thinks the cops are doing wrong, is that what you're talking about? Exactly. Do they have the right to step in? I don't have a specific answer for you. If they do get out of hand, you know what, no, they don't have any more right to be out of hand than any other, other citizen does. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's the best answer that I can give you. <clears throat> Your previous comment about, you know, some the police employee doesn't have a right to do something wrong for a civilian. And so I'm trying to say, well, based on the nature of the job itself, it's, it's based on a double standard. It's based on the right of someone to say, I've right to, I'm going to serve and protect you, but first I'm going to steal from you to make sure that happens. So. I don't know if still is the right word. I mean, people uh, make the choice to live in this country. They make the choice to, to, to be a citizen of the United States. Um, anybody has the right to go anywhere else. They vote in mayors and, and city councils and the governing body to make those choices, which <clears throat> is majority, not one single person's opinion on, on what happens. Mine doesn't make right. You could say a tyranny of the majority. And that's our goal as a police officer. It's, it's our goal as a community to live together peacefully. Mm -hmm. Whenever somebody's not being peaceful, then somebody's got to take care of that. Right. Yeah, I mean, do you agree on that? I agree. I get, but my thing is I think uh, order stems from liberty, whereas the police apparatus as it's structured, it says order comes from, you know, the rules that we set. And, you know, once you give a, a group of people... The no, I, I think you're saying that the police set those rules, though, and the police don't set those rules. The governing body sets those rules, and we're charged with enforcing those rules to the best of our ability. Right. Well, again, I mean, it's all you and the legislatures and court systems are all paid for by money taken from people, and so the incentive is to yeah, grow but, in size but, and scope. Right, but you, see, you keep saying taken from people, mm -hmm. but it, it's not taken from people, it's given from people well, what happens if by, they their, don't pay? by their choice. What happens if they don't pay? Then they get more letters, if they ignore them, men with guns show up at their house, if they try to defend their property, then they could be killed. That's, that's coercion. Well, stuff happens. Like I said, people make a choice to live in this country. The second conversation is with Mr. Barker and Mr. Miller, who work for the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Outfit. G84940. How y'all doing? I just curious if you guys are open to have a conversation. I'm involved with a decentralized project called copblock.org. And, uh, you know, I just was curious to hear, you know, your thoughts about this area and, you know, why you took the job. No, actually, we're not allowed to. You're not allowed to have a conversation? No, sir. Not about that stuff. You'd have to go through our uh, PIO. Okay. Uh, can I get your name and badge number? Do you have, do you have any concerns about uh, criminal activity in the area? I was just more, I, I'm not uh, from the area. I'm just passing through, but I'm just curious, you know, what, uh, if, if y'all are aware of any colleagues having, you know, uh, done some things wrong for me or somebody else, if you had stepped in to deter that or to, you know, if you've ever made an arrest of a colleague or anything like that or. I can't make any comments on stuff like that. Uh, can I get your name and badge number, please? My name is Micah Barker, badge number 283. Okay, and I see Mr. Miller. T is in. Okay, can I give you all a, a card at least with, uh, you're welcome, there's a website, there's a Welcome Leo's page on sure. there. I'll you're take, welcome to. We'll, we'll take a card from you. Well, I appreciate it. If there's any uh, info, any input you have on how it could be a better resource or anything like that, I mean, it's not. I'm not trying to be adversarial, I just, 
I think uh, I hope you all took the job to protect people and property, Absolutely. and that's that's something that I think is a good good goal. So for me, it's more how does that how is that achieved? And uh, you know, I'm a big advocate of consensual interactions and not coercive interactions. Right. So I think uh, I think the former, you know, brings about transparency and accountability, while the latter kind of protects people that sometimes. Uh, engage in misdeeds and things. So, yep, yep, be well. Yeah, no doubt. And this last conversation, which was more of an attempt than actual dialogue, was with Mr. Durrell of the New Mexico Highway Patrol outfit. I was working from a Starbucks and saw a blacked out charger driving by, creeper like. The vehicle lingered behind my rig, so I went out to investigate. When I saw the vehicle again, I walked towards him. Charger 635. How you doing? Okay. Yeah, can I help you with anything? Can I help you? No, I just looked like sort of suspicious. I drove up, drove around, I didn't know what was going on. I can't go get a sandwich? Oh, you know, you're definitely free to do that. It's a pretty country, right? Oh, you cool. You're wearing the movie camera? Yeah. Nice. I have one of those as well. I'm recording you too. Excellent. Everything okay? Yeah. How you doing? Everything's fine. Cool. Can, good I, day. can I get your name and badge number? No. Badge 150, I think B. Durrell. Interesting. Darrell noted he wanted to get a sandwich, but in that area there is no sandwich shop. There's an Asian Express, a pizza place, a UPS, a T-Mobile store, a Starbucks, and an Einstein, which was closed. Due to Darrell's stalker-like actions, I shared pictures of him and his vehicle with a couple of friends before I left the area just in case he or one of his colleagues try to stop and harass me on the way out. Being part of this growing positive community is definitely fulfilling, and we are together making a difference. Much love to everyone I met in New Mexico, many of whom are pushing forward and connecting with others in their own community to create a better reality. No masters, no slaves.